Good morning. So same chapter deformation in solid and the same topic, Young Modulus. Young Modulus is the ratio between stress and strain. Now, what's, what is stress? Stress we have done, it is tensile force experienced by the solid per unit cross-sectional area. And the formula for the stress, tensile force divided by area, measured in Newton per meter square, I mean the Pascal. So stress is a scalar physical quantity and the strain is the ratio between extension in the solid and its original length. Means strain extension divided by length and sometimes it is also delta r over r mean chain resistance divided by resistance it is dimensionless mean no unit now young modulus is equal to stress over strain stress is measured in pascal strain dimensionless so the unit of the young modulus is also pascal so pressure stress and young modulus all are measured in the same unit pascal now young modulus is represented by e stress f divided by a strain extension divided by regional length. So we can write F over A times L over E, which can be written as F over E times L over A, mean F over E is the material constant L over A. So the Young modulus of solids K L over A and this K is material constant. It is measured in Newton per meter. L is the length of the solid in meter and A is the cross-sectional area measured in meter square. And this Young modulus is measured in Pascal. Now, when the graph is plotted between the load, mean the force and extension for the metals, it's a first straight line, then there's a curve. End of the straight line is the limit of the proportionality. Next point. So this is the force, this is extension in meter. The end of the straight line is the limit of the probability, mean this is the end of the Hooke's law. And then the next point is the end of the elasticity elastic limit. And the last point is the breaking point. And this point sometimes called the yield point, mean this is the point where the small load will produce the large extension, but not required for the A level. Now, 
the gradient of the straight line is the material constant and the area under the graph is equal to the strain energy which is 1 by 2 Fe and it is also written as 1 by 2 Ke square and E can be written as X and also delta L. But Okay, so extension E, X, R, delta L. But when the graph is plotted between stress and strain for the solid, suppose extension at uh, X axis, so here we draw the strain. Force at the Y axis, we draw the stress here, which has unit Pascal for the metals. Same shape of the graph. This is the limit of the propanity. This is the elastic limit. And this is the breaking point. Now the gradient is not material constant. It is young modulus. And the area is not alone energy, strain energy. It is now strain energy per unit volume. So this is the difference between force and extension graph. Shape of the graph is same. Gradient here, the material constant. Here, the Young modulus. Here, the area strain energy. And here, strain energy per unit volume. Now, if the graph is plotted for the, gra uh, for the glass, stress, and strain here, strain new unit, stress has unit. So this is the graph of the glass. So this is the end of the straight line. It's also breaking point. So gradient is stress over strain. So young modulus and the area again strain energy per unit volume because the area is one by two stress multiplied by strain. So one by two stress is force divided by area. Strain is extension over length. So one by two Fe over Al. So this one by two Fe is strain energy and area into height, this is the volume. So area under the stress and strain graph is always the strain energy per unit volume. Look, the rubber is elastic, but It does not obey Hooke's law. So no young modulus. So material which is solid, elastic, during elasticity, it obeys Hooke's law. Yes, will have AIDS. Young modulus. Now we have to measure the young modulus of the metal. So the heading is young modulus of metals. And approximately for the estimation, it lies between 10 power minus uh, 10 power plus 10 to 10 power plus 12 pascal. This is the estimated value of the Young modulus of the metals. Suppose we take this horizontal surface like a bench. And here is a pulley. And the diameter of the pulley is DP, which is measured by the vernier caliper. 
So diameter of the pulley. It's a circle. Now here, a heavy block, concrete or wood block. The wire is attached at this point. Suppose this is a P. And then wire is passing over the top of the pulley. And then the next end is hanging like this. If there are few kinks in the wire, few bend in the wire, we can attach here a small load to move to make it smooth, to make it horizontal. But we can't make it 100% horizontal because some vertical components are required to balance the weight. Okay, so just to remove the kinks, weight is hung with the wire. After this, we will attach a pointer with the pulley this may be any small stick but it must be perpendicular to the thread straight up after attaching this pointer perpendicular to the thread we will measure the length of the thread between the pointer and the point p where the wire is fixed with the wall or the, with the block and the meter rule is the suitable instrument to measure the length and then we will measure the diameter of the wire at this point a at the center b and near the pulley c and after measuring this a b c diameter with the help of micrometer we will calculate the average diameter of the wire so three measurements diameter of the pulley with the vernier caliper length of the meter uh, length of this wire with the meter rule and the diameter of the wire with the micrometer then we will arrange at least six masses suppose this is 100 gram mass we could take any man 150, 200, but at least six. Now we will attach one of the mass with this hanging weight over here. Due to the load, the wire will extend. And this extension is shown by the rotation of the pointer. The pointer will rotate to the new position. This is the new position now. Due to the extension of the wire, pulley rotates. So the pointer rotates in clockwise direction. And this arc length, this one, is actually the extension. This arc length and according to our previous math knowledge, the length of the arc in a circle is equal to theta divided by 360 into 2 pi r, which can be written as L or this extension is equal to theta divided by 360 into pi and two times r mean the diameter of the circle and the circle is pulley so the diameter of the pulley so we will write extension is equal to theta divided by 360 degree times diameter of the pulley and the theta is the angle through which this pointer rotates now by placing protector here center of the protector is placed exactly at the middle of this pulley and this is the protector position it is placed in this position and this angle is marked here theta so this is the position of the protector the new position of the pointer so this is theta is so this is zero line 
and this will be the 90 degree line and this will be 180 so we measure this so by using this theta here divided by 360 and the diameter of the pulley we can calculate the extension and we keep on loading this wire with the masses yes and by measuring the angle we can measure extension one extension two extension three so on and then all values must be tabulated mean they are inserted in the table number of observation the load in newton then extension in meter so at least six reading one two three four five six like the practical six reading but after taking each extension we will make sure that the elastic limit is not exceeded limit of parity is not exceeded we will remove the all load we will remove all masses hanging with the wire if the pointer goes back to its original vertical position, it means the limit is not exceeded. So we'll make sure we are performing the experiment within the limit of reality. How? By checking its extension. And then removing the load. If the pointer goes back to the original position, so the limit is not exceeded. So extension and the load both are recorded after recording this we will sketch the graph force load at the x-axis extension in meter at the uh, force at the y-axis and extension at the x-axis then we will draw the graph definitely the graph will be a straight line because extension and force both are directly proportional after drawing the graph we will calculate its gradient which is equal to k it's a straight line because all readings are taken within the limit and then by using the equation e young modulus is equal to k l over a the k is the material constant in the gradient and the length of the wire is measured with the help of the meter rule and divided by area of the wire and the area of the wire will be pi by four diameter of the wire square which is measured look the cross-sectional area is equal to pi r square so pi and this r can be written as diameter divided by two square so pi times diameter square divided by four so the area also written as pi by four diameter square so this is pi by four diameter square is the cross-sectional area of the wire so in this way the young modulus is determined so this is very very important experiment so for length then diameter of the pulley diameter of the wire load and angle by the protector these are the measurement in this experiment